Dude, the transgender movement right now is like a big thing, right? Massive. And wow. it's uh, it's quite a it's quite a thing where you know people are identifying as male and female, and some are not identifying as anything at all. Take hundred meters and look at the men's record and the women's mm. record. It's it's different times. Straight and, up steroids. Does it matter? Yeah, that's a good question. They say more than fifty percent of the world population has is lower back pain. They try and debunk yeah. it. Like I believe everything is is fixable. They must have a. Uh, Olympics where Oaks are allowed to use steroids. I think the interesting thing about this conversation is that uh, Use the roids! Nah, nah, I need to be careful here. Yeah. Give me all your attention. One time for the misfits. Nick, we spoke about this just before we started. The most craziest injury you have seen. <laughs> so let me fill everybody in from the, from the pre-conversation. Yeah. I, th I think what I kind of see as like just a normal Saturday or normal fixture or training or whatever is kind of might be crazy to other people, but you kind of become like immune to it or you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you don't see it as, as a crazy injury, but if I just take the last couple of weeks that I've had, it's obviously school rugby that's finishing. Um, I had a kid that uh, looked like they had a cut on their lip during a game, <sighs> run on, go have a look at them, see what's, what's potting. It's a bit sketchy, might need some stitches, see if they can push them to half time. Half time comes, we have a look at it properly. No, he's actually bitten through the whole Jeez. lip. Ooh, yeah. So, so, I mean, that was like two weeks ago. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? Is he, is he holding the rugby ball? And then... No, there's, so there's a. He's a biter. <laughs> so, the same person sends me a video of them in theater after the game and they like cleaning it and they spray like a little spray in his in his mouth and then it literally comes out the front of his oh lip so like, so there was like a hole like all the way through a piercing all the way through yeah no, you should rather just Un an a unsolicited piercing, piercing. Yes. this is schoolboy rugby this is why Indian yeah. kids don't play rugby <laughs> yeah they state to accounting they law, the doctors finance doctors yeah. that's it straight up as a as a physiotherapist do you guys like see it and be like, all right, okay, this looks like a hospital pass that's about to happen. He's going blindside. Bang, let's go. The funny thing is like, I think in all sports, not only rugby, we'll do rugby as an example, but all sports, like you, you watch a very different game to what the coaches see and what the players see. So even when I chat to people after the game, they'll say things that happened or like this went well, that went well. And I'll, I just wasn't, I wasn't watching that at all. Yeah. I think it's you watch for different things. Yeah. So with rugby, for example, you kind of watch, or I kind of just watch ruck to ruck, like to follow collisions and make mm. sure everybody gets up from that collision before we move on to the to the next one, right? Yeah. And then you get those, you, like if you're watching a game on TV and you see a high ball go up, two guys are going for it and you, you're looking like, oh, this could be a bad yeah. collision yeah. or you see someone falling badly in the air. Then you kind of just get on immediately, assuming that something bad has happened from that. How do you test a, con a concussion? Boom. Yeah. Bang. I'm what do you out. guys do? How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> you see people, you see William's people do down. the fingers. <laughs> get on. <laughs> you see the fingers, you see people do the track. There's like a standardized questionnaire that you've got to ask okay. them Straight to, up. See, to see how like lucid they are. So it's like, where are we right now? Do you know what the score is? Um, who did we play last week? Who scored the last try in the game? And you like adapt that questionnaire for different sure. sports. So last week? Dude, I'm, I'm in the zone. I'm in the heated zone here. Yeah, you can ask me. I just got out of a scrum, bro. What are you asking? <laughs> You'd be surprised. A lot of them, a lot of them get it right. Like uh, we had an incident this uh, past weekend. Someone gets it right in the game and it's kind of like mm, touch and go, but they've passed. So you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Obviously it's about player safety. So if, if, if there's a, uh, in evidence to say it's not safe for them to continue, you pull them off. But sure. um, I've seen also in uh, Springboks when they're playing rugby, the the physios they've got the the earpiece. Yes. What yeah. is that for? Because <laughs> I'm obviously assuming 
uh, Rassi and the boys are busy screaming tactics to the physio. Yeah, because you get and on, you in contact. Yeah, because you, yeah. you got the water. And is is that what's happening? What's that earpiece for? So you do get a lot of um, you do get a lot of like tactical information going through there. Not necessarily when you're on the field, but more sort of like during the game because the coaches are in one area and you get to roam like yes. almost the whole field, right? But um, you. There's normally enough people around the field to designate different roles to different people. So um, yeah. in one of our setups, we've got a SNC who's uh, like a very experienced rugby guy. So he'll do most of the tactics. And then on my side, if it relates to my side, then I'll give messages. But mostly it's to relay what's happening on the field. So if I run on, okay, this kid's really in, in trouble. We need to get someone warming oh. up because in five minutes we might need to make a, yeah. a change here. Can we make a change? Can we not make a change? Can, so, I, can I ask you to name drop like... When I say, are there any boys that you've worked with in the past year that you say, yo, this boy, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be a Springbok? There's a there's a kid from Marisburg College that I had the privilege of working with for a couple of years. Um, he had a few injuries in like grade 10, yeah. 11, 12. Um, he's currently playing in the baby box, Lelite Beste. Oh, Lelite nice, Beste, boy. everybody knows him. Wow. No, we, just watching him play. I just know Tabo. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I was just about to say, Maybe I don't know Tabo. Uh, <laughs> no relation, though. So, no what, relation. What, what position does he play in? Uh, he plays as a center, but um, his physical ability is just unreal. A, like unmatched, I think, in his age group, and he's yeah. probably going to develop more. In he's in a great, he's in some great setup, so he's going to work yes. with all the best wow. people. Yeah. But I think just seeing him play at a junior level, his like understanding of the game wow. and the way wow. that he moves, and like you can't really coach that. It's like uh, you guys are probably big football guys as well. Yeah. I also Massive. watch football. Giants. We just don't look the part. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't coach that like ability to. Some players just mm. get into the right spaces all mm. the time. This kid's just got that knack sure. in rugby, yes. which oh. I think is sometimes a little bit more complicated to Yo, get that. For sure. To get that right. is, is he in matric now? No, no, no. Uh, he is baby boxer. What under twenty? Yeah, under twenty. Under 20. So, he's, oh, so he was a college. He's nineteen player, yeah. and he's playing baby box. So he's oh, even geez. a year young for that oh, wow. age group. So I don't know if that means he can go to two junior World Cups, but he probably can. I yeah. would. I would want to wow. put money down. If there was a betting app for that, yeah. I would yes. put money on the schoolboy betting app. School. Wow. They should do something. There's, a, there's another business app. Yeah. Your schoolboy betting app. And you, pick, <laughs> you pick your spring box before they leave school yeah. and you, you get a massive return if they yes, if the so odds get are right. So Nick, you've been uh, as part of the Marisburg United team, the uh, SA20 Pretoria Capitals. Yes. You've been, that's so that's cricket, that's soccer. Um, and then obviously you're involved in these uh, top uh, schoolboy rugby schools. Um, you've also been in men's health. Um, Jeez, yeah, men's so, health. So for, let's, let's for, stop there. Like men's health, massive. Let's start with men's health. All right. Sure. How did you get that gig, and why? It's probably a, it's probably a, a long and a short story. I. I enjoy writing and like blogging and that sort of stuff. And I was doing it for like two years. I would try and put out, I think it was one, one piece a week of like written content and try and yeah. put it onto uh, my website and uh, Facebook, whatever, whatever platforms I had. Um, and I basically was like, well, I'm, I'm kind of capped at the amount of people that I can reach. Let me, let me see if I, can, if I can put some of this stuff that I'm doing already onto a bigger platform. Reached out to Men's Health. You literally, like, <laughs> no matter what you want to do in life, just take a chance and see. I just took, I bought the magazine. I looked at who the editors and the, the people to contact were. And I emailed everybody. And someone replied to me. Get and, out there. Well, they're like, do you have a six pack? I think, I was like, just about to ask. Did they be like, all right. Uh, you we, have to have it. The yeah. writing's good, but uh, take your shirt <laughs> take off. Take your shirt off right take now. Take your shirt I, off right I now. I think my story was probably appealing because I, I lost a fair amount of, of weight. Oh, hey, really? Yeah. Were, you, were you big? My whole life, like chunky guy. Wow. Mm. Absolutely. Winter Absolutely. boys. What the heck Winter did you do? What, what, what? So the, I think the first thing that really like took off was um, I was using a diet called intermittent fasting. And it's, yeah. it's interesting because it's not really a diet. You just restrict the times that you, that you eat. And I think for me, plus the training that I was doing at that time, I think that was like the cheat code for my own really? transformation. Like it just worked for me in terms of how I trained, how I recovered. 
it fit my working day in terms of like you stop eating at uh, 8 p.m. in the evening, you start eating again at midday the next day. Yeah. I'm not a big breakfast guy anyway. Yeah. It kind of just worked. Mm. So that plus enough time to do that and things just, I promise you, my whole school life, been lifting weights in the gym, like trying to get in good shape, yeah. rip for summer, that's Deck the thing. for VAC. So you never really you worked. transform Chaka yeah. and I. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, hey. That's hey. a challenge. Are we putting this on camera? Okay. That, that's a massive challenge. Nick, Nick's got a job to do here. Before and after. All right, we'll chat. Well, this, this is after, and then we'll do before later. <laughs> <laughs> Using a bit of uh, camera trickery. For I, just, I need a chow, yeah? <laughs> We almost had a pie just before we got <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this but man had cashews. No wonder he was just staring at us. He was like, "Guys, really? We're talking some mooses." But yeah. it's almost twelve, so yeah. you can start. Eating. You oh, would be able to start go. eating now. So is it now. like? Let's talk through your day when you're on this diet. Like, yeah. let, let's go from from the wake up. Let, let's hear your schedule, your whole schedule. <sighs> so what time were you waking up? It's uh, depends, but um, I think at that point in my life, it was like maybe four twenty wake up five o'clock training, wow. five to six or five to six thirty, get back. What type of training are you doing? Here? So Just CrossFit was my big thing. It still is a big part of yeah. my training now. What so, does that entail CrossFit? Like uh, CrossFit's like a mix of gymnastics, uh, gymnastics, Olympic weightlifting, yeah. Avengers. Um, like traditional yeah. strength training, uh, like cardio. So wow. running, rowing, cycling, wow. all sorts of stuff. Here's the thing about CrossFit though. The, the cool thing about it is that you always pushing yourself. So there's no like, yeah. it's time wise and, and, and reps, yeah. amount of yeah. reps in the time. So you, you're you always pushing yourself, but I tried it guys. I also tried it. I tried it. Bro. I just don't think I'm both like that. Yes. Like I did it and I was Every finished. single time I was finished and my body's like, I can't. You can't, can't. move the next day. Bro. So like, I know this is going off topic, but how do you get back up? How do you recover? Day? That's the main thing. Yeah. I think that not every workout kills you. Like it's yes. hard and yeah. it pushes you, but I think the like it's time restricted. So you'll go hard for like seven minutes or yes. fifteen minutes, and then that's then that's it. But if you do that enough times, yeah. so you can you get hard days, you get easy days, whatever. Over like months and years, now I've been going since like twenty seventeen or whatever. Like um, was it yesterday morning or two days ago? CrossFit class absolutely finished at the end of the, I think it was only like 12 minutes. Yes. Finished, but then I've got enough of like a track record to like, I, I die in the 12 minutes, but the rest of the day I'm okay. The next morning I can still function and walk and but now, that sort of did thing. Did you see his Instagram story yeah, this morning? Because I just follow him on Instagram yeah. and he's like, Pooh, I don't know what you did. Like, what is that movement called? Uh, that is a push jerk. So I'm, 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 you get a clean and jerk, which is at the Olympics. Yeah. You, you clean the weight off the floor, yeah? And then you have to- <laughs> My man just did there. one of these and, and then the comment that he put, so humble. He's like, wasn't my best, but I really did well. I'm uh, like, shut up. Okay. That was like 600 kgs. <laughs> but I guess also, Nick, when you're working out now, cause you're a physio, yeah. you're probably like, geez, I gotta watch out. My patella doesn't, you know. <laughs> yeah. My medulla oblongata yeah, so yeah, is exactly. like kicking out. So like, what are we doing? If anything, my effect. secret is that I, I probably see a lot of people with sporting injuries. So when I I train. Yeah. I, maybe maybe I don't push myself as hard as you guys I push see. us up when you go at CrossFit. Maybe I just keep it keep it with you know there you know you keep it yeah. yeah you know you know what to do and that allows me to do it tomorrow and day. in two days time. Jeez. What's the difference between a physio and a bio? <laughs> the million dollar question. Okay, one is an expert in sports injuries, um, like rehab. I like how you said expert. Yeah, yeah. and then the other one's a bio. <laughs> 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 that sounds like a, a, a doctor and nurse conversation. Uh, that's, yeah, man. that's like doctor I'm, dentist. I'm like saying the beef that. Is tight. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. saying that. But uh, some of my best friends are bios. Okay. Yeah. They, they are good people. There's a lot of beef between the two. Is it? I can imagine. This is yeah. a lot of beef between the two. Physio bio. Physio bio. Yeah. Yeah. You guys only did physics for like one semester. <laughs> yeah. We've got BSCs. Yeah. It's a real. It's a real <laughs> thing. Yeah. 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 Don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I don't want to. I'm not B commenting on degrees anymore. Yeah. BSC. Um, you know what? The, I think the boundaries are blurring a lot, a lot more. Mm -hmm. So in, in different settings, uh, in different settings that I work, like um, if I take rugby, if I take domestic cricket, the uh, SA20 cricket, rugby, you've got different professionals around. So there's physios, bios, yeah. and you get a lot of SNCs as well, or like physical trainers, mm, whatever you want to sure. call it. I think the knowledge that is kind of like amongst those three is all that you need to kind of manage 
from junior athletes, all these professional athletes. Mm -hmm. I think it's just in different settings, different people handle different things. Traditionally, physios more work with um, like injured players. So if yeah. you've, if you've uh, rolled your ankle or torn your hamstring, the first bit of your getting back to playing is with the physio. From there, you generally move on to either your trainers, your bios, whoever the next person is in the, so, in the so, system. So there's not there's not a massive difference mm. between. So what's the, the bio? Two. What's the bios yeah. doing? Because if I've torn my meniscus and I've had yes. an operation, right? Boom. Who do I go see and do I need to see both of you guys, physio and bio, or can I just see the one? So you'll, you'll probably start with, I think best practice would be you start with a physio and mm. the physio gets you to move your knee again, make sure you got all the like required strength to then be able to do running and whatever. You may start oh. like a bit of light jogging with your, your physio, but then when you move on to bio or your SNCs even, that's when you kind of like, you'll develop your speed again, you'll learn how to turn again. You'll, sure. you'll They'll take you through, if it's rugby, they'll take you through like tactics or if it's hockey, they'll oh. take you through drills on the field to make sure that you can do what you need to do to play safely again. So, so you, you work obviously in different professional settings, cricket, rugby, hockey, soccer. Do you specialize? Is there a specializing thing yeah, there? Like football or, or cricket? Because the movements yeah. are different, eh? Because it's completely different yeah. movements, completely different Contact types of changes. injuries. Yeah. I would, if, if anything, I would say I've obviously like moved towards more team sports compared to the individual sports. Okay. I, I wouldn't say I'm a specialist, but I, I'd say I'm probably more of a guy that is equipped or I've got a lot of expertise in the team sports setting. So uh -huh. diff different sports, different movements, injuries, all that sort of stuff. But it, act it actually is much, much of a, of a muchness really. Like if you've played team sports, you know what it feels like to be in a team and you have bad days, good days, you win stuff, you, you lose stuff. Mm. But I think the chemistry of going through that together is something that I enjoy and it resonates with me. I would probably struggle if it's, if I'm the physio for just a, 100 meter sprinter and it's just me and yeah, my yeah. athlete that go to all the, I think the dynamic then changes yeah. and it's a little bit different. I like the big, the big groups in the chemistry. The highs are really high and that's incredible. When we're the, all winning and stuff. Yeah. yeah the lows are also really yeah. low, but I think the lows also aren't that bad because you've got a team around you and yeah. uh, not, not every one of the 11 or 15 or 18 or 20 odd plus staff is like bleak after You've lost, I, and I've had some, I wouldn't say big losses, but I've had, I've lost two, two like uh, cup finals in cricket in the part in like Jeez, in the space like, of 12 months. What, what teams were these so, in the league? The, the, our domestic team is uh, KZ and Inland and the franchise team is the Tuskers. We lost our cup Isn't final. Isn't that Wayne Parnell? No, 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 no. Uh, that's Jeez. the Capitals. Yes. But you, didn't you work for the Capitals? No, no. Yeah, yeah, no, so, sorry. So, the Capitals made the finals, no? Yeah. Yes, so we, yeah. we made the SA20 finals and then lost that final. Jeez. So in, so Dude, in, you guys were dominating. In December, you were in yeah. December, we lost the domestic one day trophy with our marriage big team, the Tuskers. Yeah. And then February, we lost the SA20, which is T20. We lost that final. <laughs> at the wow. Wanderers as well. So it, those are like bitter pills to swallow. You wake yeah. up the next morning and you're like, Yo, yeah. I still can't believe we lost. Like a I'm week so later, close. you're at home, you look at your runners up medal and you're like, Yo, I still can't believe. Sure. When, I, when I look at, I've still got the medal. I've got, I could sign jersey in my office. Yeah. When I look at that, I still think like, damn, we, we lost that. So close. And, it's, and it's painful, but that like, yeah. it happens. You pitch up on the day and someone's got to lose and someone's going to win. And True. sometimes it's, uh, it's, but but Nick, you you do you look at it and be like, flip, if if I had got Stain's hamstring <laughs> done the way I wanted it to be done, yeah. we wouldn't have lost. Or do you do you, you don't feel like you're to blame, or do you feel like there was a certain thing you could have done to try and influence it? Because I know the players do. Yeah. But yeah. what are you feeling as a physical? Uh, you know what? I think um and I say this to my team of physios, colleagues, people that we work with, I think the metric in professional sports or even in school sports nowadays is, can you give the coaches as much availability as possible? Because the more people they have to select from, the, the stronger your ah. competition, the group is, the, the better team you can kind of put out on the day. So it's a nice way of putting it, yeah. Yeah, I think that's our contribution to, I, I can't make someone bat or bowl mm. better, I, well, not really in like a, that's their skill set. Especially if you're working at the highest level, yeah. you're not gonna teach one of the fastest bowlers in the world to bowl any faster, yeah. but you can do a great job strapping them. You can Equipping make sure that they're them. recovered 
for the game. You can make sure that they don't have aches and pains, all that sort of stuff. So that's my contribution to hopefully getting a result. But yeah, my idea of a physio is that they basically give you the longevity in the, within the sports um, by taking care of your body. Like Ronaldo's True, got yeah. his own physio. Yeah, and helping and look you take at him. care of the a lot body. Of, yeah. A lot of like the top, top guys in the world will have their own team. Yeah. So you say Ronaldo, like he'll go home and he'll have a trainer at home and no a masseuse at home and a physio at home yeah. and a dietitian and or chef that's preparing every single meal sure, for him. Word. Look at um, like, uh, I think there was some stuff about uh, LeBron and how much he's invests in yes. himself. Yes, LeBron James. Ryan Moon just told us it was like yes. $1.6 million a yeah. year. A year Jeez. on things that basically uh, either improve his performance or prolong sure. his career. Yeah. Uh, how important is image? Because I, I only ask um, if you, no, when I say image, I mean like, <laughs> If you're going to go to a physio that <laughs> looks out of shape. Yeah. Let's just How say. How important yeah. is that? Like, w doesn't that not, as a, as the athlete, you'd be like, oh, but yeah, I don't know if I can trust How you. How can you tell me I need abs? Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> if, uh, if you don't look like you're looking after your own body. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a... Uh, I, I don't, it's like you shouldn't trust a skinny chef, right? Because yeah. they're obviously not eating their own, their own food. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think subconsciously it does play a, a big role. Mm, so I think yeah. for me, that's why it's important for me to be active. And so I kind of know what people go through following a structured program. And I've had my own injury. So I know what it's like to go through a injury process and to be on the receiving end of physio all that sort of stuff. But I think subconsciously you get a lot of buy-in from the people that you're working with. If they know, okay, no, this guy trains, he looks after himself. He's, he's obviously clued up about injuries because he's had his own injuries. Like, I think it does create a lot of, True. a lot of buy-in. A little trust. But, but it doesn't mean you can't be a good professional without that as well. Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. sometimes it's just knowledge. It's just like, a perception. You could get yeah. a, Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I mean, how much of the world is just about perception and exactly. signaling and whatever if people believe exactly. if people believe that you are the best podcasters out there yeah. you you arrive here and you've got that Better perception and you, you you know what i mean you yeah. like almost like will it into existence so if someone yeah. comes to me and they believe that i'm the right physio for them and they're like no nick's done or he works with all these guys whatever i'm gonna come right they come right more often than not but it's not because i'm a I'm different to anybody else. Yeah. Maybe it, we just start our relationship mm -hmm. with a lot of like good rapport. So they're going to do every rep and set that I tell them to. And they're, they're going to trust when I say, okay, and you're going to miss this one, but we're going to get you back in yeah. two yeah. weeks, three weeks time. They kind of believe that. Dude, the transgender movement right now is like a big thing, right? Massive, yeah. And it's, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a thing where, you know, people are identifying as male and female and some are not identifying as anything at all. And I, I would like to know just from a, a physio perspective, right? Um, on episode one, uh, Josh mentioned, you know, what, what do you do if a female is scrum against the All Blacks, for example? Because like, there's a lot of incorporation now you that know, they're wanting to discuss. Like there's an American Oak. I don't know if you've heard about him. Um, I can't say Oak, sorry. Um, <laughs> American guy who American doesn't identify vein. as a male. Yeah, okay, okay that's correct. And... Uh, <laughs> He's basically, he was part of the, the male, <laughs> yo, yo, he's digging me, eh? yeah. he was part of like the male Olympic swimming team okay. and yes. he was ranked, I think a hundred in the world and next Olympics, my man comes through, uh, my person comes through and he's like, identify as a woman and he's currently the champion. There you go. The, the Olympic female champion. Yeah, so, so uh, exactly. So yeah. there's a lot of like obviously medical alterations yeah. one has to yeah. do, right? Yeah. But in sports, when you look at it from a physio's perspective, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Professional expert, um, is there advantages or disadvantages in that kind of thing? Physically, physically yeah. I'm talking about yeah. now. So you always looking at impacts and yeah. all of that stuff. But like really you, mm. you obviously worry question. if there's impact yeah. between different genders or is there no yeah. sort of thing there? I think the interesting thing about this conversation is uh, I think the world and like real world scenarios have moved so fast that like governing bodies of sport haven't been able to keep up with, yes, yeah. with it. So we've had these weird situations where people transition and then end up in the 
in the other gender category yeah. and yeah. excel and it becomes mass, like yeah. massive in the media yeah. and whatever. Because it's more of an advantage. Like if a, if a guy joins a very um, contact sport um, and he re-identifies as a female. Yeah, but my question there, Josh, is yeah. is it an advantage? Yeah, is if it they an do advantage? that, I, I think it depends on the, the sport. It depends yeah. on the sport, but yeah, yeah you'd, you'd assume that... If you, <laughs> Nah, nah, I need to be careful here, but you'd assume, <laughs> you'd be, you'd assume that um, men transitioning to, or transitioning to women would have uh, physically different characteristics would, would, that would maybe put them in adva- at an advantage in sports with physical contact yeah. yes. or relating to speed or things. Because if you look at, just take the two, uh, take 100 meters and look at the men's record and the women's mm. record, it's, it's different times. And, Straight up, yeah. You know, so there's you can a different see it category. So yeah. if you just, if you take that logic, it's going to be different. But, but in sports like where it's yeah. not like F1, I'm certain females could be incorporated into but sports so like may, that. So yeah. maybe maybe the future of sports is that um, you might end up with a, I don't know if it's called gender fluid or like a yeah. trans category for for sports yeah. Yeah. where you, and every, like I'm talking every sporting discipline from swimming to athletics yeah. to that would be, motor that would, to, that, that would, that'll be that great. To yeah. rugby, yeah. cricket, whatever, you will end up maybe having um, like but then transition there, there was, teams there was discussions teams around like that. that. And they were like, if we do that, then then we we're not being gender inclusive. Oh, do you get what I'm saying? They, there was loop, yeah. they were saying like they, there was discussions where they were like, okay, cool, we could start like an Olympics where it's for people who don't identify as it, but then yeah. you're excluding them as well. Do you understand? So that's been a big. <laughs> it, it's kind of it's like a damned, a damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. It is Dude. a very, it is a very tricky thing. But sport, physically, but from a f- straight physical perspective, as you're saying, a hundred meters, it's it's the evident. world records are different. The world records They're are not different. I think that, that's probably all the like the logic evidence you need, you need. In, in this yeah. in that uh, discussion. I've always said, okay, hear me out. They must have a uh, Olympics where Oaks are allowed to use steroids. Yo. Just allow it. Like a certain cat, like a, like a everybody's allowed to use it. And let's see, see what happens. Yeah. What boundaries this and barriers can you This is actually such a good break? conversation. Steroids. Yeah. Use the in roids sports. in the sports. Does it matter? Like, for example, Chaka and I say, right, boys, we're putting you on gear. <laughs> right? We're on gear. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to... Tomorrow morning we wake up, we Iron Man and, and Captain America. Is that going to happen? Yeah, I'll, I'll have moods. Or do we have to actually put in craft? Like, do we have, like, do you have to put in the work with steroids yeah. or can they just I do think, the work for yeah, you? Yeah, I think people underestimate, or well, underestimate and overestimate its, its ability. I think if you take an elite population and you start introducing performance enhancers, then you start to get like, um, uh, results that you don't expect. Like they, it's so good that you almost, you're surprised yeah. by it. And there's like sports like cycling, for example, that there's been a lot of cases and it's sure. kind of tainted the history a little bit yeah. of it. Yeah. Lance some Armstrong, of the things that guys Lance have been Armstrong able to do. a long time under the covers there. Yeah, he was like it, doing hectic well, stuff to yeah. keep it under wraps. If you follow that story, it wasn't just, it wasn't just him per se. It was like, it was team. par for the course in cycling at sure. that yeah, point, yeah. Sure. Which is why he kind of got in and got out without, and it only came out mm, much many later. Years, but he was stripped off his. But yeah, what I did think he they do? they have taken yeah. all his titles away. Yeah, what did he do? He he had blood. I think his main thing was blood doping. Yeah, sure. I, I, if I stand, I stand to be corrected, yeah. but I think him, his main thing was uh, EPO blood doping. But he he was also on some other. Um, performance enhancers because he had also suffered from testicular cancer. Yes. Sure. Uh, yeah. He raced the Tour de France. He had he developed uh, cancer. He took time off, and then he made this epic comeback to going yeah. on and winning again. And then and nobody somewhere like, hey, wait in a minute. the somewhere in the interim, um, yeah, he was using performance enhancers. At, at, at schoolboy level, it's always been a, a constant conversation of like, yeah. hey, there's yeah. doping here happening here. What what drives the Oak to want to get on steroids? Is it is it like the pressure of saying, yo, I need to put on size? to get into the team or physically I'm not as good Possible. as other oaks. I think, uh, I think kids and adolescents in particular, or even just all athletes, I, I could actually say, that people are generally misinformed about, like you were saying, does, does just taking something make you like world-class yeah. or do you actually yeah. have to put the hard the work, work in, in yeah. as well? It's definitely, you have to put the hard work in. It's not an immediate separator. 
but I think at lower levels, so like um, school sport, it's a it's a lower level than professional sport. Something like that might be perceived to give you a bigger advantage because it is size based yeah, and yeah. physicality based. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? But it doesn't mean you're going to be able to catch and pass and kick a ball any better. Yeah. You might just be stronger in a collision. Do you know yes, what I mean? But then yes. there's also the downsides. There's also the downsides of it, and I think people overlook those. Like, yeah. um, if you look at steroids in in your high school years, you've probably got your hormones optimized mm. just naturally, yes. right? That you that you wouldn't even need to be on on anything. Like, even from a supplement point of view, try and encourage the guys. Like, you, if you're eating real food, if you're training hard, if you're getting enough sleep, you're doing the basics. You actually don't need anything on on top of that. But it's the perception that's probably a little bit out. It's like that that instant gratification of. Yeah. I feel like I'm taking something, so it's doing more for me than, yeah, it's than a just tra- yeah. I'm doing so. What you just said now yeah. is a lot of it mental. Is is it is there a big mental? No. Yeah. Well, the stuff definitely works. Oh, that's oh, that's no, for that sure. Works. No, that yeah. works. That works. Can, it can works you, because it's it's chemicals and it's yeah. medication and the schedule stuff and and that's that sort of thing. So the other interesting part of of that conversation is that there's a lot of like uh, illegal. So. Take for example, steroids are scheduled, right? And a big pharmaceutical company like um, like Pfizer or Bayer or whoever will make these steroids, right? But your endocrinologist might prescribe it for certain medical conditions, et cetera, et cetera. But now you get these underground labs and uh, producers who are making these in garages and alleys and all yeah. sorts of stuff. And that kind of gets onto the market as well. The pharmaceuticals are held to a, like a production standard and quality. ISO. It's like, I, I don't know who they ISO, are. ISO 9000. Isn't that for food? No, it's also for oh, pharmaceuticals. They're held to some sort yeah. of like legislative yeah. standard where the underground guys are not. So yeah. in terms of access, I think what people end up taking from like back alley guys and because it's all scheduled drugs, yeah. right? Yeah. What if people end up taking might not be the real thing. And if you're taking something, you don't even, you can't even tell what's in it. And the manufacturers are yeah. not liable to actually tell you exactly yeah, what's in it. There's always gym bras. Yeah. Like, hey, you I've could be, that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you could be taking, yeah. you could be taking things that are like horrifically bad for you and yeah. you don't even know it. And you yeah. might only feel those effects in like 10, 15, 20 years down the line. So I, I would say that's enough of a deterrent to tell people if it's yeah. not prescribed by your doctor or- yeah. And, you, and it's pharmaceutical stuff, you should be very weary with what you're taking. Sit down. Deanti, Deanti just got back in the spring. He's just got setup. back. Oh, yeah. what a player though. What a um, player. I felt for him because he was, sure. he was, he was just almost there for that World Cup that we won in he 2019. He was unbelievable and before he got back. fire. Yeah. Insane. Uh, and I really felt for him. And I just wonder, did that happen by mistake? Like, or Because there, there was chats about him saying yes. like it was like he didn't know. Like yeah. he didn't know. And I know sometimes they come out in front of the cameras and they yeah. say they don't they didn't know. But like he was formidable. Yeah. And now we can't put yeah. we can't put the fact that he used roids to that talent. Surely not. So the, the interesting thing about the whole like I was also very skeptical whenever you hear people come out and they're like, Oh, I didn't know what yeah. that it was in it, yeah. right? Who it injected like, you though? Yeah, you're always like, Yeah, yeah, you're lying, whatever. So I went to go, because of the professional sports, we do a lot of testing on mm. athletes. So one day I end up having a conversation with uh, one of the doctors that's involved in the anti-doping and things. I'm like, how common is this inadvertent doping or like a, a supplement that you take gets contaminated, right? So this guy explained to me that um, the, the way that they do, uh, especially I think it's blood test anti-doping, right? They take a blood sample and looking for banned substances they could find a droplet in an Olympic swimming pool, right? Yes. So you don't need to be taking vials and vials and massive quantities just to get caught. Yeah. You could have a contaminated supplement. Yeah. That, so we talk about the underground labs or whatever. You could have uh, underground steroids and things being manufactured in the same place that you get your protein supplements and there's a cross-contamination oh, and they pick up the droplet wow. in the swimming pool and that's, and that's you. And so that's why- so yeah, it's important to then- Buy your supplements at this game. No, <laughs> it's got to be clean not as e- hell. Not, yeah. even, that, not yeah. even that, like you, you, okay. Cause there are manufacturers that you could probably get a disc in that have, that have had- I've read a lot of those, the, like the label yeah. at the back is like, note that this is not, this hasn't been clinically exactly. tested. And I'm like, By what? Anti-doping yeah. and yeah. SAIDs yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So sure. 
the like the best supplements out there will do like batch testing. So they'll test their yeah. own supplements and then oh. all in a th- or they'll send it to a third party to be tested and then they get like a sticker that says this has been yeah. batch tested and we can confirm that there's no yeah. contaminants or anything in there. But those are often a lot more expensive than yeah. that because it, it costs people to go do the the che- the, yeah. the checking of yeah. the supplements. What, so, what would be like a basic supplement stack? that you'd recommend to like somebody trying to get into shape? Um, like, for, I wouldn't even say supplements for, for most guys. You just like, say eat properly. I would say like- Get a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> eat, I would, like eating properly is even like vague, but like eat more good stuff than trash. Yeah. yeah. Like it, less sweets and I don't know, if, 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 if sweets are your vice, then try and swap it for fruit or like yeah. try and do little changes over a long period of time. Mm. Yeah. Um, make sure you're sleeping enough, make sure your training is is right for you. Like if you, I see a lot of guys in the gym just doing forever bicep curls and yeah. and arm day. bench press. It's like forever, oh, five days a week, arm day. Yeah. But you could probably burn more calories if you trained your legs a little bit more. Yeah. Mm. And then if you, yeah, you can get smart with a whole bunch of stuff. But if you're getting all those things right and then you want to start on, on supplements, yeah. I don't think you need to go too much further than, so, okay, let's take... I'm a bit of a bro gymmer myself. Yeah, so yeah. you want to, you think about like, what can I take pre-workout? Maybe what can I take post-workout or intra-workout? And then what can I take like just through my day? So if you're training super early mornings like I do or super early or super late afternoons, maybe you feel like you're a bit fatigued around it. So caffeine, not even like, you don't need a actual pre-workout Caffeine is just enough of a yeah. stimulant to kind of get you. Double espresso. You Double have espresso. A three quarter flat white there, Woody. Yeah, oh, there's a three quarter flat three white. Quarter flat white. <laughs> three quarter flat white. Three quarter flat white. It's so good. It probably switches all the lights yes. on. Dude, we just yeah. chatting. We should have that like every day after. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. There just, you go. Yeah. That's one of those. And you feel that. And yeah. so that's like, yeah. that's the stimulant part of the of the caffeine yeah. that, that gets you going. There's caffeine tablets, yeah. there's caffeine in, in drinks and all sorts of stuff that you can also. But Nick, I want to go back to the roids there. You, you said droplets of blood in a swimming pool so by then you're thinking then surely you knew what you were having if you caught with a, a doping allegation you could have just been you could have just not followed because especially at that top top level yeah. there are people telling you no we only use we only use these protein powders that are in our home changing room or whatever because we know all of these are like double blind tested or or whatever yeah, yeah. And maybe that person then just straight away because they're like, nah, I'm sure I'll, I'm safe. It's just a protein. So it can, it can innocently. So it can happen. be a mistake. It can, it definitely can be a mistake. Mm. And then it also can be a, a planned, deliberate. Like deliberate thing. But you never know. And I, yeah. what I've learned is like this, there was a cricketer that um, got tested positive, I think at a ICC world event. And um, what are the cricketers it was doing a diuretic. With steroids? No, so it was a diuretic. It's still a banned substance. So what is that? What does makes that you wee? It makes you wee. Helps helpful for weight loss. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So if you're trying to run faster or yeah. or be a bit lighter or whatever, you might use a diuretic, and uh, so they get banned for for this thing, um, at the hearing or whatever. And it turns out it was inadvertent to- doping. They took they took a wrong medication by accident and they plead guilty and they say oh, this is the shoot. story or whatever. Still serve a ban, but luckily the ban was short enough for them to resume playing. I think it was after like a year or nine months or something like that. But Dude. you have to, if you at that level and you're getting tested, you have to be so careful and you really have to like educate yourself Shame. as to yeah. what you can and can't do should and shouldn't do. So being, being a physio, it's put you on a lot of big stages in your career thus far. Are there any big athletes that you've worked with and what's the major difference with working with schoolboys yeah. to working mm. with a massive big professional because yeah. you've worked with a big bunch yeah. of those what's what's the major differences um you know what like watching a lot of sport you you see on tv like the best in the world and you're like oh that it must be so easy or so nice to be Erling Haaland or, mm. you know, they like, supported Man City. If you supported Man City. <laughs> if, you, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you, like me, you think it's so easy to support Bukayo Saka, everything. Yeah. Ooh, are you an Arsenal I'm man? A big Arsenal fan. Unlucky boy. Big Arsenal. <laughs> right, we came second, yeah. we're playing in the Champions yeah. League again, yeah. we're not doing too bad. It's been a long time since you guys have heard that. Yeah. So we're moving. Yeah. We're moving. You're right? there. You're there. So you, you think it's so easy to be these guys, but then yeah. when you get to work with them, 
like you actually see the reason why they are the best people in You're the like, world oh, because the way so they look after themselves, the way they conduct themselves as yeah. as athletes, the way they like talent and skill level is just it. Unreal. It's, that's the reason why they are where they are. Even when you see the way the guys train and practice, like the the focus and intention and yeah. the preparation is just on another level. At uh, at SA twenty, I got to watch Jacques Callas bat in the nets. He was one of our Ooh, coaches. Legend. Yeah. And to see him play like that close, yeah. the the technical ability is still there. I don't know how many years yeah. since he's retired, and that kind of it just shows you that like class and ability. Like just lasts a lifetime, yeah. you know what I mean. And there's a reason why yeah. he he is or was one of the greatest all rounders that have ever played sure. the game oh of cricket. And word. he's, I'll tell you now, he's still got it as of yes. <laughs> as of this year. So, colors. If you put colors in a in a Protea shirt, you like we really need to back. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Know, I don't know about Get the Proteas back. now, but he's playing in like um, he's playing in um, some like legends T uh, Twenty leagues around the world. So oh, okay. yeah, the IPL guys are really smart with the way they are setting up. Uh, like if yeah. you want to watch all the former legends, there's a league that all these guys oh, play that's in now. So smart. So, yeah, it's actually it's you can view the young guns and the IPL and all wow. these tournaments around the world up to you can watch the legends still play. Yes. So it's very yeah. clever the way. So so being in the nets it. now as a, as a physio, like I remember schoolboy cricket. There's always it's it's a big difference. Like when when you see a fast bowler coming in and you're watching, oh, okay, have you seen like levels? Because when you're that close now, it's completely different from TV. Exactly, completely different from TV, completely even different from watching them play in a game on the side of the yeah. of the field. I remember, I, so if I get the chance to be in that situation, I normally try and stand on the side where I can kind of see what the ball feels like if you're on the batting end yeah. and then try and stand behind the net as well. Yeah. So you can kind of see how quickly that ball comes it's through. So who have you seen that's quite fast? Uh, I remember watching Anrich Nokia ball in, oh, in- Mustache man. In PE. I think yeah. he's lost the mustache now. Has yeah. he? It was so check nice. Out, check out a recent video. The mustache so is nice. epic. Um, watching him bowl in PE in the net, he, he arrived late because he came from a national um, camp or something like that. Yeah. And he, it's one of the few times that he was um, bowling in the nets and just seeing how qu- like he builds up, builds up, builds up. And when he hits his top end for like a, a handful of balls, that thing is flying. Yes, it's Nick. So, dude, you've done so much um, in terms of your, your, your career as a physio. And I'm just thinking like, how difficult is it to take yourself out of the physio lens yeah. when you're actually literally supporting a team. I, I'm, I can already picture, if I was a professional physio, I'd be looking at the, the rugby match and I'd be like, let's go, let's go, let's go. You check Malcolm Marks, take a crash ball, you're like, oh, flip. Why are the, the physios not on? You'll yeah. be like, oh, there goes the Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how, do you, how do you take yourself out of that? Like when I'm watching sports? Yeah, I'm, like when you're like just- At home or- how do you know, At office, home or yeah. at the stadium, Your, bro. I, that's a good question. I guess you probably just never switch off, yes. to be, see, to be honest. Like I watch, I watch a lot of Premier Leagues. So I'll watch uh, the physios run on and look at an injury and I'm trying like, oh, I wonder what test they're doing. Or Ooh. like- in whatever career you are, if you're doing something that you enjoy, you end up like being a bit of a nerd yeah. or like a geek about it. And I guess that's me and yeah, that's... And, and my profession. But uh, yeah, you have to learn to switch off sometimes. And I try and uh, yeah. I don't want to be that parent that's watching my daughter play and I'm like yeah. running on for injuries. We and, need to fix her. Yeah, she's not moving too, well. Let's strap her. Extra, in that, uh, extra on that front. I, I'll have to like separate it a little bit more. Yeah. But like you love what you do. So yeah. it's you... Everything's interesting, you know what I mean? There's always something to learn, something that's interesting that's yeah. going on in sports. How yeah. hard is it for a physio from South Africa to make the jump and be part of the Premier League setup <sighs> or the Champions League setup? Because there was a girl from Durban. There was a big article about her. Um, I don't know where she's from exactly, but I think it was Durban. And she's actually working with the PSG team. Yeah, now. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Wow. She was at the Springboks yeah. before then and then moved to yeah. Paris and is at So how, how hard is it for like people listening to this that are physios now and they're like, yo, they'd really like to join a setup. Like I'd, I'd like to be the, the physio of Arsenal, for yeah. example. Never me, but I mean you maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think it's possible. Hey, if you look at our track record, our physios here uh, excel on a global stage, although it's obviously a, a, the smallest amount mm. of people. But I think the education here is good enough. Um, I think if you really 
like dive super deep and become the expert in football or rugby or whatever it is. There's a lot of um, a colleague of mine is moving from uh, the Bulls to a team in Japan. A colleague of mine from Durban moved from the Sharks to uh, Zebra in Italy. She oh, see. This uh, other lady is in... Um, is in the PSG. One of my lecturers yeah. from my postgrad at UCT does all the like medical insurance for the Premier League. Sure. So you, like wow. without us even knowing, South Africans are doing big things, yeah. and it's not even just in physio; it's across the board. So the it's quality of medicine. our of our institutes is world class. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're an old Stellies and UCT boy. Yeah. So yeah. we're on there with the big boys for yeah. sure. Absolutely. So let let's chat long term now. Um, where would you like to be in the next? 10 years? Uh, well, before long term, I, I'm thinking dream. Dream. Yeah, let's dream, think dream. Yeah. dream. Your dream physio job. Dream. Yeah. job. I th you know what? I think your dreams change and evolve yeah. over over time. So uh, when, I was at, when I was at when I was at physio school or whatever, I would have given anything to just be involved in some sort of professional sports team. Okay. Then you get there and your your like your vision expands a little bit. And you're like, yeah. okay, cool. Now where can I go to from here? Yeah. So I think I've had a couple of those sort of like level changes in my only short, like 10 years yeah. or so as being a physio. Where I'm at now, I think thinking forward, I'm really enjoying the cricket space. I'm really enjoying the T20 part of cricket. I think yeah. that's an exciting thing globally. Yeah. Yeah. If I had to pick something to kind of continue with, I'd probably stick in that sort of line. Yeah. Goal wise, I would say, being a part of, so obviously the Pretoria Capitals have an IPL team and teams yeah. across the world to try and uh, be more involved in an organization like that and do that more work amazing, for them yeah. outside of the country. I think that could be a, a cool opportunity. Yeah. Long term, um, <laughs> we were talking, I heard you guys talking about um, people moving outside the country or yeah. Ryan Moon was actually saying yeah. people move outside the country and, and whatever. I think it's if you want to do big things on a global stage, you probably have to do fairly well here yeah. first. Exactly. So true. Yeah. True. So long term, I, I I'm open to working outside of South Africa, but I think I've probably got a lot more to do here still before I can take that next step. Yeah, that'll be sick. Yeah, I think there was a stat like they say more than fifty percent of the world population has is lower back pain. Is that a common injury? Let's try and debunk yeah. it. Like. Are things fixable? Like lots of guys have like disc injuries yeah. and lower back pain. Like everybody that you know that you have a chat to is like, oh, bro, my lower back yeah, is killing my me. My back is killing me, man. I've had, uh, it's killing I've had, me. so one of my injuries from CrossFit was that I, I herniated or like basically uh, ruptured or blew a disc in my lower back and yeah. mad symptoms down the one side. What is that? <laughs> can you hear what I can hear? That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. That is you, you son of a what gun. What the hell was that? <laughs> Sorry, that was uh, Josh's meditation <laughs> music. <laughs> Sorry, guys, sometimes sakes, I like to bro. meditate. <laughs> what in the hell was that? We'll get this medi <laughs> meditation music. Jeez, Sorry. I'm so sorry. You were saying you heard Sometimes I like to like, like ease down, oh you know what I mean? Gosh. I might look hard, but I like to listen to some <laughs> classics, you know what I mean? Just unwind, unwind a little bit. Unwind and he's like, what is that? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I was like, how can that play? How can that play on C? I thought I closed the app. Yeah, herniated. No, so, so um, yeah, I herniated a disc in my in my lower back doing CrossFit. Mad pain, like probably took I want to say four to six months to kind of like Ooh. get back properly again. Still get a little bit of back pain from time to time. But if you want to do but everything, I'm biased because I'm a physio and I fix these. I try to make money yeah. fixing these things, yeah. right? So I I believe everything is is fixable. But there's like degrees of difficulty. I think yeah. uh, with my own lower back, you've like you've got to learn to, you've got to be open to like, even with your training, you've got to be open to be like a student or like learn some stuff while you're going through the process. I think yeah. a lot of people pitch up and like, oh, my doctor's going to fix me or these tablets are going to fix me. or My physio is going to fix me where like 10% of the, the magic is going to see someone and getting help and advice. And then 90% of the magic is actually doing things that will get you yeah. to where you want to go. I like it, yes. it breaks me when I hear people say like, oh, I, I can never deadlift again because I've got a bad back or, yeah. or whatever, which I think is like rubbish. You probably yeah. just haven't done the right things or tried or uh, it's always someone's like, oh, my knees are really bad. I can never run again. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You, 
Sometimes we need to be yeah, careful. That's me. Jeez, I can You're always I saying can, that. I can, I can yeah, but can't run. Again. I, I can't run. running no way. You definitely can. It's wow. just about how you go about getting there. <laughs> so if you really <laughs> wanted to, you could do it. And I got to get up first. But you might not You might not want to and you might not have no, any ambition of doing it. So then uh, like a better health thing if you want to be have a healthy heart and lungs is you cycle instead. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There's always options. So what would you say it. is the best form of cardiovascular activity to lose weight? Aha. So what, what, yeah, what, what can we, what can we do from a cardiovascular place? Cause people are always on the internet yeah. and looking and, you know, counting yes, macros. Yes, yeah. we, need to yes we need to eat properly. Okay. Oh, that's know. number one. We Everybody know knows eat the salad. Yeah. Okay. Um, not the McDonald's, but yeah, but like, what can they do? Not in terms of speeding up the process, yeah. but just making sure that they can start seeing some consistent yeah. results. And when to do it as well. Because yeah. like people are like, oh, you must do fasted cardio in the yeah. mornings. Don't do cardio before weights. Yeah. What, yes. what's, what's going on there? There's a, there's a lot of like myths and I think like yeah. bro science about, about that sort of stuff. But if I can give you the, my version of the most scientific answer, if you do, uh, so you've got so you've got cardio, but then you've got uh, aerobic work and anaerobic work. Anaerobic work is like when you do CrossFit and you feel buggered after the twelve minutes. Yeah, that's yeah. you've been working in an anaerobic capacity. If you do aerobic capacity, you're working in the right heart rate zones to improve the way that the blood goes through your lungs and uh, how oxygenated it is and all that sort of stuff. If you do, I would say if you pick one or the other, the science really says you should be doing aerobic stuff and that's going to benefit everything else so you'll get more effect yes uh, when you do lift weights when you do do uh, anaerobic or high intensity work as well you'll maybe recover better sleep better you'll climb the flight sta of stairs better at the office or do you know Oof, what i mean yeah that's killing so me right you, now. Uh, which is nice because aerobic stuff isn't the hardest to do it's like a it's like a light exertion it's not like break yourself for for 12 yes. minutes it's like uh, 30, 20 to 30 minutes or more if you're feeling good in the right heart rate zones and you're there and it could be a brisk walk for someone. Yeah. The fitter you get, the probably the harder you have to work or move, which is the, the kicker. But yeah. if you're starting at like a zero base, you could probably get there with like a brisk walk in your neighborhood with a little bit of hills and stuff. And it's consistency and it. though, hey? It, it all adds up over time. Yeah. So yeah. I think the thing that people get wrong is that they try and do, I'm going to start on Monday morning, first thing. And you Rise get up, and ground. You get up at five and you do that one session, but then it's hard to do that again tomorrow. And True. Then yeah. If you start and you're like, okay, cool. This is going to be a, I'm going to change my whole life. It's a lifestyle. So this week I only have to do that once. And then next week I'm going to try and do it twice. Yeah. And then in three weeks time I'm going to try and do it thrice. And small little changes that are probably easy to keep up with i think people like they'll starve themselves they'll only yeah, eat salad yeah. they'll try and train like 14 times a week or, or whatever and it's, it's a journey yes yeah, it's that's, just that's <laughs> but no journey. one wants to hear that yeah. no one yeah. wants to hear that because i want to be fit for i want to be fit like in two days time instant gratification tomorrow. yeah i need abs tomorrow there's i need to a, look better tomorrow yeah, tomorrow uh, in a month or there's actually a very cool book i read believe it or not really um called atomic habits okay and it's about that where you just your focus shouldn't be the end goal. It should be the type of person you are um, and, and changing that. So for example, it's not about losing 10 kilos in a year. It's about changing your life to be a healthier person. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that takes little things. So going for a walk and you can just say to yourself, just a 10 minute walk every single day, for a couple of days and then you can make it a 15 yeah. minute walk but you need to change the lifestyle and make that part of you instead of god damn it i gotta go to the gym yeah. tomorrow and stu stuff like that we, we should just, have just interviewed you today. no i'm just saying just, <laughs> that's exactly what that's exactly what nick's saying just be a healthier lifestyle instead of focusing on that strict diet and yeah. strict yeah. so we were speaking that, about yeah. business before we started here mm. and i think it's it's the same in like life and personal development the same in business yeah. same in your, like your exercise or who you want to be as a person i think you always got to attach it to like a bigger sort of purpose mm. if like i know you want and everybody wants to have abs but maybe a better goal and something that we try and like uh, plant a seed in people's head is especially if you're old enough to have kids already don't you want to play with your kid when you are like in your 50s 60s and be able True. to like 
uh, get up off the floor and push them on their bike and uh, pick them up on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Tied to a goal like that. And then all of a sudden it's actually not that hard to just walk once a week this week yeah. or twice yeah. a week next week or do some push ups. Yeah. you know, every morning before you get like tied to a bigger goal because abs at, in the summer is like a fleeting thing, but you know, I want to When you're single, they bang though. Or, when you're single, they work, <laughs> they work. Yeah, single they guys, uh, abs. Single they, guys they out there, abs yeah. work. Don't sure. listen to this man, <laughs> they work. He's married with a kid. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we fight, we fight. But I think I always have this chat, right? And it's funny because no matter what car you drive, no matter what, what you have on your hand, when you physically feel good about yourself, there's nothing that can come close to that. Yeah. Like jump out of an expensive Ferrari and you, you don't feel good. You're still going to have like confidence issues. Jumping's tough. If you Jump, don't jumping's good. tough. Yeah. yeah. And getting in and out of Ferrari is hard. Exactly. It's hard. You're gonna, it's hard. You're going to struggle. tough to get out of Ferrari. But buddy. if you feel physically good, yeah. I just feel like it changes your performance in your work, yeah. the way you are as a person, the way yeah. you are at home. You just feel good. And after working out as well, you just feel... Yo, <laughs> pumped. Yeah. You look a bit like Jason Colby now. Uh oh, uh oh. You know, I'm not going to lie. People say people that a lot. Guys, we're getting you a scrum cap that. for the next the episode. That. If I pull up with a scrum cap, we're getting you. like rugby. <laughs> Rude, you know, I was not going to lie. We were having drinks that night, and this girl comes up to me and she says, You look a lot like Jason Colby. Chizzy, Chizzy, I'm, I'm like, sorry. This guy does not look <laughs> like you, bro. I, no, but this I mean, guy does not look like you. When Chizzy and Colby scored that child, bro, as a brown person, everybody was ecstatic. You, must, oh. you could have sworn he was like a nephew or someone <laughs> like in the house. Like everybody's like, Chizzy, oh my gosh. And everybody tries to find out like, are we related Ooh, to this, yeah. bruv? Like, is he, is he part of it? Yes. Yeah, I do look like Chazen, eh? You do look <laughs> like Chazen. Thanks, man. Yeah. Nick, so bro, you've <laughs> gone through all of this and now you've got uh, enhanced physio, bro. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, geez, um, it's not easy starting a business. Sure. No. In South Africa, a physio, a physio business. What was that like? Yeah, I think just starting a business in general is yeah. pretty, it's, it's hard to get it right. Yeah. But I think it's starting a business is also easy because anybody can do it. Yeah, to start. Yeah, but true. I think that's why you people also say the stats. I don't know what, what the stats are, but it's like um, like one in five businesses make it, and then the four flop or something like that. Mm, so mm. I think it's it's hard to get it right. It's easy yeah. to do it, but then you're probably going to flop. Mm. Um, it probably started from me just wanting to do have like more freedom in my professional career. Like I was working um, for uh, for a, another practice and. For some reason, I had this beam in my bonnet that was like, I want to I wanna see if I can afford a house on what I'm currently yeah. on. So I do the exercise and whatever, and then I'm bitterly disappointed. I'm like, yeah. oh. And I, the reality hits me like, okay, I'm probably not going to be able to live where I want, own a house, yeah. um, do the things that I want to do if I keep going this route. So now I need to do something different. Drastic and change. For me, that was probably the right move because it's kind of, um, when you're on your own or doing your own business, like you can do as much or as little as you want to. But the cool thing is it's, it's up to you to make it all happen. So mm. it's, uh, if it flops, you can't just blame your boss or like, oh, no, this is unfair. Or whatever. It's on you. You, yeah. you could have done it. You've got all the mm. hours in the day. It's up to you to make it or break it. And I think that really like drives me and gets me going. Like mm. nothing is given. I've got to make it happen every single day. And now that we've kind of built a little bit, we've got people working in there now. I'm accountable to them because mm. they... Uh, they rely on you. Well, them, them getting paid as a salary for their families and their mm. financial future. Yeah. And they also professional. So they want to develop and, and I want to give them a pathway that maybe wasn't available to me when I was their age. So it's a yeah. whole like kind of, uh, I don't know, it's like an ecosystem that you kind of develop. Yes. And this wheel just needs to keep on, mm. on turning. And hopefully There's that responsibility keep... now though, hey? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Well, two people and then to my family yeah. as well. Yeah. Like married now, I've got a yeah. almost two year old at home. Jeez. So. You that guys are moving mad, you. eh? I'm the only one yeah. on this couch. Yeah, like, yeah, you, be, you best get working, boy. Yeah, you need to- You a, best get working. Geez. The market is getting smaller. No, but I, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, just letting you no, know. my dad in law doesn't no. listen to this. Yeah. He's saying I'm almost there. So. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Yeah. So you went and you just decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Do, and, do my own thing, yeah. like enjoy the freedoms yeah. of it and take on the responsibility of like making it work yeah. and uh, along the way trying to kind of, I wouldn't say disrupt the in, uh, industry because that's kind of uh, the clicky thing that everybody would, yeah. would say, but do it differently or do it better. Quality. Yeah, mm. do it differently, do it better. Like we're probably the only uh, physio practice that really, if you've seen some of like, like our work uniform and 
even just how we kind of put the brand across from our social media yeah, yeah. point of view, put a lot of time and effort and attention yeah. into doing that. I've seen that, yeah. And initially I got a lot of flack from people saying like, oh, you just do physio, man. Don't worry about this. Like just, yeah. just do what you do. You're worrying on like, um, no. like silly things. But full circle, I think it actually kind of adds to that like credibility. The image, now. And the image. Yeah, it, it is important in like well, in you, modern business. Putting some efforts behind your... Your baby. Yeah. It shows me yeah. what you care about. Ros yeah. always tells me that I literally, like, I will just wear my work uniform. But we've got, like, uh, like some sick Puma stuff. Shout out Puma. Nah, stuff I say, hey, Puma. And oh, you work like a lot with Puma. And, hey, we need to have yeah. a conversation, Puma. Oh, hey, tech, Puma. Cool. <laughs> we need to have a conversation. If you ever need Chiz and Kobe's to shed. get involved, I'm here. Yeah, Bro, I'm here. Guys, <laughs> yeah. But and I end up wearing all that stuff because I also like, I love it. It's like yeah. my thing. I yeah. created it. Like, I'm I proud saw of you it. dripping in Puma when you came and I'm like, hey, looking Pumeasy. You know what I mean? So it's nice to have all those sort of things because it also separates you from, like, people People come to your office and like, hey, these guys have thought about it. Like yeah. I spend money on uh, branding the practice inside. You only see mm. it once you're inside there. Yeah. Once you're inside, we've already got your business, but we want you to have a great experience yeah. and feel good while you're there and make and leave with an impression of like, yo, these people really know their stuff. I had a great experience yeah. in service. The staff are really well trained. But we got to go on this journey with this man because I want to yeah. see us transform from okay. this episode. So, okay, yes. so what do we do going forward? So, um... What we need to do is we obviously need to just get the basics out of Nikia quickly. Yeah. So it's month one. Okay. Right? Yeah. What do we start with? And what then are we month doing? Two. What's our okay, routine? Okay, bearing in mind, we're going to eat healthy, eat green. What do you think we should do? But how many times a week are you training now? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> one or two. I'm a busy man. One or two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Review your five. See if you can get more yeah. like quality out of that if you can make it more effective yeah and then see what difference like the food thing makes yeah. we'd like look at how you're sleeping and yeah and yeah all that sort of stuff for you i would say see if you can just for the first month see if you can move from one to two <laughs> I, I, said, I said from nine to two. one you mean one from nine to one and if it's and if it's one one walk a week and one sort of resistance training perfect i'm that's, on it that's all you aim for enhanced physio nick Pereira, men's health Bafana Bafana, former physio, Maritzburg United, Pretoria Capitals. We are, we, we've we made a, a, a mention to Ryan Moon to say, hey, Ryan, we're going to go and watch mm. a PSL game. Yeah. All right. Are you joining because, us? Because we were well, thinking we, about PSL. If we're watching Ryan, we've got to go watch uh, Arrows because unfortunately yeah. Skulls and Arrows. So, no oh, yeah, man. Unfortunately, PSL. there is no Marisburg United. Mm. We will be watching Arrows. Arrows. We, we, we're getting the calendar from him. He's coming gonna, with us. He's our first recruit. Well, yeah, he's our physio there for he's our just physio. in case I pull a hammy shouting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what we're also going to do? Yeah. We're going to start a fitness movement. In All changes. right. Run with Nick. Run with there Nick. Go. Oh, there we go. Goodness There we go. What have we done? Run with Nick. We better put that. We better put that on eh? nick we'd love to see more of you please man yeah, that would be yeah. dude you are one of the top in the industry um no doubt thank you for joining us man you are You're we, we're very happy that you took some time yeah this is a, a big deal someone out there they say every 35 seconds someone is uh Born. breaking their knee oh. so we're so glad <laughs> breaking the knee <laughs> is it no i'm joking